Hi, I'm Stephanie Schlatter and I'm here in Northport, Michigan to do a little plein air painting. This is a late spring day. It's really beautiful out, perfect painting weather. And we found this orchard of ancient apple trees that are still, a lot of them are strung up now, but these are the old school, beautiful trees with a nice barn in the backdrop. We've got vineyards that scream of Northern Michigan up on the hill. So we thought it'd be a great place to to do a little plein air painting today. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing you wanna think about when you're doing a landscape painting in plein air is where your horizon's gonna be. So if you put your horizon high, you're painting the landscape. The sky's a backdrop. If you put it low, the opposite is true. And because this vista has these amazing apple trees and the vineyards, I'm gonna keep my horizon line high. And the sky is not giving us a lot to work with today. It's beautiful, but it's overcast. So, being a painter and not a photographer, we can kind of play with the scenes and make them what we want. So I'm gonna make the sky just a little bit more interesting than it is today. When I work plain air, I do try to pay attention to nature um, much more closely than I do in the studio. But when the sky kind of gives you not a lot to work with, and I'm okay with the drips, it's part of the process. And really, when you think about plein air painting, which is painting outside, it is about the process. That's why we're here. We're here to be outside, to enjoy the outside. And I'm kind of just laying down a nice neutral blue and not getting too precious about it. I do like the way the tree line kind of dips there. It adds interest, so I'm gonna play with that. But I want my sky low enough that there's peepholes in all of those trees up there, and I want the sky to show behind them. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. And a lot of the time you spend painting is spent here on the palette, thinking about the color and mixing the color. It's really important to think about how your brush is loaded, the color that it's loaded with. If you're mixing more than one color on the brush, you just wanna be really mindful of that. And I'm, I'm using a cerulean blue for the sky, but I'm adding just a touch of orange, the opposite of blue, to gray it down just a little bit being a little true to nature today. It is quite a gray sky. And the sky is never quite as blue as our eye thinks it is. The eye definitely lies to us. And when you pull the sky out, um, like in Photoshop, and you look at what color it really is, it's more of a cyan than a kind of ultramarine blue. And for the clouds, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of yellow. I still want it to read white, but not to actually be a strong white. So I'm just putting a little Naples yellow and a little cadmium, cadmium yellow. And again, I am paying attention to what I see out there, but I'm improving upon it just a little bit. You just kind of dance the brush across the canvas, and you begin to get the idea of clouds. Now because my white has just a little bit of yellow in it, you wanna be careful that you're not gonna get green when you mix it with that blue background. So I'm just paying attention to it, wiping out the color a little in spots. And I started, as you can see, with a toned canvas I almost always do that. Um, it's a nice medium tone, and I pick a warm tone because I love the way that warm color shines through in the finished painting. And I don't worry about covering every bit of the canvas. I want parts of it to, to shine through. So I became a landscape painter in part because of this area, northern Michigan, the Leelanau Peninsula. Um, it's just one of my favorite places in the world. Truly, I've, I've spent a lot of time traveling and my heart always belongs here. And I loved spending time and hiking and 
just being in nature. And that's what plein air painting and landscape painting's all about. So it was a real natural fit for me. I was already a painter, but I hadn't landed into landscapes just yet. And my time spent up here really solidified that. It really, um, they, they call plein air painting the new golf because it really is about being out here. I don't know if you can hear the birds in the background. I was out here the other night and there was a tractor going and I could hear chickens and it's really as much about being out here as it is about what you're painting. And they say if you really wanna to get to know something, paint it because you have to study it so closely. I have to look at what are those clouds doing? And clouds we think of as white, but they're not. There's a lot of gray in clouds. There's a lot of shadow. So there's a lot of um, colors that you don't pick up on, especially in a sunset. You get beautiful turquoises and oranges and purples that are really far more dramatic than your eye let you think and you notice that when you go to to paint them and then you tend to notice the sky wherever you go which is a great byproduct of being a painter you start to pay attention to everything you see more closely so I'm just gonna put a gray in here for shadow so my clouds don't end up too white. And they overlap each other, so I'm thinking about that. Thinking about areas of light and dark. And I'm not getting too precious about it at this point. This is still very much an underpainting, and you wanna be moving quickly. Especially in plain air, the light and the weather change so quickly that you have to move along with that. Just a few areas for brightness. All right, and we're gonna move. We'll come back to that, but we're gonna move down for now. This is a dry brush that I'm using just to blend a little bit. Still keeping nice white areas and gray areas, but softening the line because you're making lines when you paint and you always wanna be making the decision if it's a soft line which would be a blended line or a harder line. Just gonna put a tiny bit more color down here at the base. And we're gonna move into the trees, so. I'm using an olive green and a sap green to kind of create a nice dark color, but it's spring right now. So the leaves are a lot lighter than they're gonna be in a month from now. There's a lot of lime. So I am gonna use a little ochre to tone it down, but I put the dark in the trees down first, and then I'll put a little bit of light over it later. And again, because it's spring, it's not quite as full. I mean, they've filled out quite a bit up there, but you see a lot of branches, and it looks like there's even a few interesting dead branches, and the leaves just kind of there's all these holes around them as they kind of pop into the sky. You see some that are a little bit taller. And I'm just using about a one inch flat brush and dancing it along the surface here. I wanna emphasize that dip that I liked so much that drew me Anything that's just a little bit interesting, you can play with that and emphasize it. And that's the joy of painting. You get to make decisions and it's, it's your world. So you get to create it the way you want. And again, as I said earlier, um, when I am plein air, even though I do get to make decisions, I do get to play with things and create them as you like. Um, I do try to pay attention to nature because I'm here and that's why I'm here. I try to really study what's happening maybe more than I do when I'm doing studio work. 
So going very quickly, just getting the idea, there is a treescape up there in the hill. And things in the distance are never going to be as bright as what's closer to you. So keeping it kind of muted. And I'm going to add just a little bit of gray, or I'm sorry, of blue, just to make it a bit more hazy. And just using little cross brushes to lay down color. I am using water soluble oil, uh, oil paints. So um, I do not use any mediums when I'm working in nature. I like to protect our mother earth here. And there are some really nice turpentines now that are non toxic, but I don't think any of them are as non toxic as water. So. We we'll use the water soluble. And I'm bringing the tree line down just a little bit to have a little color. And the oil here, when I put it in really thin like this and I go over it, that's gonna give me something to slide on and it's gonna make the paint move better. So there's vineyards up there, but from this distance, they really just look like hills. So that's, we're not gonna get really detailed about it. That can make a painting feel really busy and um, it can be hard on the eye. So we're just gonna give the impression of soft hills back there. And again, with the color, I wanna keep it muted because they're in the distance. It's important to spend as much time mixing and getting the right color. The distance, you see a lot of purples, so I'm putting a little bit of a grayed purple with Arizalin crimson and um, cerulean blue mixed with some Naples yellow to lighten it. I don't always lighten with white. Naples yellow um, is a wonderful color for lightening and it keeps it from getting chalky, which the white paint can sometimes do. Just a little water. And I know that it's gonna mix with green because I've already put that green down. And what green is gonna do is it's just gonna kinda of gray my purple down a little bit, which is what we want since this is in the distance. And the Arizalin Crimson is, um, it's a powerful color. So you wanna use just a teeny, teeny bit of that. Again, with just some crisscross brush strokes. The other thing this does when I bring my color down into the next layer of the painting is it gives you color harmony. You get a little bit of the color that you're using all over the painting mixed throughout. And I'm just blend a little bit. Again, not getting terribly precious about it at this point. We're focusing on an underpainting. And from this point on, we get a lot of green. So I'm gonna use a really big brush. Thinking about the consistency, how much water's in there impacts what's gonna happen. I don't want it too watery at this point. And this is just some olive green and sap green moss mixed with the purple that I was using up above. And 
and I often use um, a palette knife to mix my colors on the palette here, but I forgot that today, which is part of the experience of plain air painting. You have to imp improvise sometimes. So we're doing that. And I'm, I am using kind of a grass. I'm thinking about the fact that this is going to be grass. And I want it just kind of wispy. And just enough to cover it at this point. And one of the things when you're plain air painting that you really want to think about doing is stepping back from your work and seeing if you're in harmony with what you see before you. Sometimes when you're really close to it, you lose a bit of perspective. So I'm gonna, and, and you, you wanna take a moment to enjoy the beauty, not get so caught up in the painting that you're not enjoying the whole reason that you're out here. So I'm just gonna take a little moment and check my painting. So the painting is looking where I want it to at this point. It's nice and loose. Um, the birds are singing. I'm getting excited about putting these beautiful apple trees in. So everything's going good. I just want to make a little bit more um, grass. So I'm using less water at this point. I'm using a lot of the darker color because I have a lot of nice lights in here. So that's another um, important point in landscape painting is a value. It's all about the value and you want to make sure you have your lightest lights and your darkest darks so that if you took a black and white photo of your painting, it would still read with value. Um, and that brush is not performing how I want it to. So we're going to switch up to a one inch flat. Again, you want to make sure whether you're using um, oil medium or you use water soluble oils like I do. Um, your consistency. I'm thinking very much about how much paint versus how much water I have. And I want this paint to be a little bit thicker than what I was, this is kind of the second run. There's paint all over the canvas now. And now I'm getting just a tiny bit, still keeping it super loose, but just a little more detail. I'm loving that that warm color is kind of showing through perfectly, so that's working well. And when you think about green, green is probably, well, I guess it would be in the painting world well known to be the hardest color um, to mix. And oftentimes we end up painting everything the same color green. When, when you look at nature, which is always our greatest teacher, there's lots of different greens that you see out there. We talked about the fact that it's spring, so we've got a lot of limey green, but you have some greens that are quite yellow, ochre yellow, rusty, then deep, deep shadows um, in those trees. And overcast, so you don't see a lot of shadow, but you still see a lot of variation in the grass. So we want to be thinking about lots of representing all of the different greens. So I'm taking a little ochre now, yellow ochre, and mixing it with my olive green, just for a little bit lighter. Taking a little sap green. And I just wanna coat this area that's gonna have trees throughout it with the grass. And I don't wanna get precious about it. We're not painting every blade of grass. We're just giving the impression that there is grass. And for me, that's what keeps painting fun too. If we had to paint every blade of grass, that could get just a bit tedious. Okay. Blending that into the more grayed out purple color so there's some harmony. Bringing that down a little bit. And now I wanna think about 
the barn in the background and the apple trees. So we make, we make our composition, just your fingers are two owls, you look through and you see, okay, what's in the composition? So what I can see right now is the barn is kind of at the edge right here. And this is gonna be this gorgeous apple tree, almost in the height of its full bloom, is gonna be my star of the show. And it's gonna go right here. So I'm using a, a scrubbing brush with really short bristles, about an inch wide. And I'm gonna draw in the barn by removing paint. And I wanna think about where it's located. It'd be easy to kind of put it up here in the trees, but it's not. It's set quite low. So just scrubbing out some of the color. Okay, I have the idea of a tree there, or of a, <laughs> trees are on my mind, but that's a barn. I'm gonna use a little raw umber with black and green because raw umber has a lot of red in it. Green is the opposite of red, so that's gonna to tone it down. And even though that barn over there is kind of a tan wood color and green, I want it to feel like an old wooden, old school barn. So I'm, I'm thinking about that. This is where I can use my liberty as a painter. And that's just a little browner than I want it to be. I want it grayed out a little. So I added some green to kill the red and a little bit of blue and white. And a touch of black. You do want to be careful with black. Some people say never use black. I, I, I don't tend to like the word never. I think there's a, always a place for it and it gives you um, I use a lot of black. It gives you some nice shadows. All right. That's more like it. And since when you're in nature, there's no hurry, take the time to get it right. You're listening to the birds. You're enjoying the beauty around you. There's no hurry. So I want to talk a little bit as I'm just laying in the barn here about painting it's it's um it's a process that's increasingly popular particularly plein air painting but i meet so many people who say i couldn't even paint a stick figure i don't know how to do that and there's this concept that creativity is something that's kind of bestowed upon you and you either get it or you don't and if you don't you're totally out of luck and that is simply not true creativity and the art of painting comes from hours and hours of practice. It comes from learning. It's not magic, it's hard work. However, to put paint onto canvas, you don't have to, you don't have to learn all the rules. You just have to wanna to be outside and you have to wanna to enjoy nature and you have to detach from the outcome. So everyone can paint is the moral to that little story and anyone can learn to. It's about putting in the hours. And if you're okay with not always being so happy with the results, you can do it anytime you want. You wouldn't sit down at a piano and expect to be able to play. But for some reason, people think painting is something that you should just know how to do. And there's a lot of great videos out there to help teach you. And there's a lot of great information um, and it's something you just have to, you have to learn like anything else and be very patient with yourself while learning. It takes time, just like think of that piano or any music that you've ever learned how to play. Your early times doing that were, were not your greatest successes, right? And I've met painters who, who don't always like the work that they do plain air. Um, they're just out here to be in nature and they go back in the studio and fix it. Um, that seems like a bit of wasted time to me. I like to be happy with the results I do in nature. And I use these paintings then back in the studio in those long Michigan winters uh, to create studio paintings from. And then I can make choices on whether I want to 
alter it, put a beautiful sunset in, maybe where there wasn't one. But one thing that I have found is you have to paint a lot of sunsets to be able to paint one inside. You have to paint a lot of barns to be able to paint one inside. And you learn from being out here in nature, which then lets you be in the studio working from your studies or even occasionally photographs more successfully because you've done it so many, so many times. Okay, so we have the idea of a barn. Again, not too precious about it. We'll go in and, and add details later. A little bit about my setup here. I always have these camping towels with me and then I do use paper towels as well. And I always carry those out with me. You never wanna leave anything behind when you're working outside. Um, just collapsible water uh, containers. And then this holds my brushes right here. We have this really secure, and I like the, the Pochita boxes, outdoor painting boxes, because they don't blow as much. I can pack this all up in a backpack and hike in and out of my locations, and that's the joy of it. All right, so now the star of the show. I'm thinking about my beautiful apple tree here. And we have quite a gray trunk on that. And we don't have a really strong light source, which is what you'd want to be thinking of um, normally at this point in the painting. So we're going to have to create our own drama and imagine shadows a little bit more than they are. Just watching the branches, not getting terribly serious about it at this point because we're gonna go over it with the leaves. But branches do some of the coolest things. They kind of jet down like this and then kick back up. And this one's going right in front of that barn. That's gonna be a beautiful branch to emphasize. And sometimes you're pulling out paint as much as you're putting it down so that that warm background comes through and gives you some texture. Pulling out the paint up here. Some of those branches are quite light. going over here and there's going to be trees in the background this is quite a big orchard but because we've already picked our composition with our frame here we know that we're only going to include three of these trees this guy back here which you can just barely see the trunk and right now I'm focusing on pulling out color because he's gonna be, um, this is the star of the show here. So these are background characters, like supporting actors. And that's the key is you just, you wanna be having fun when you're out here. That's the joy of painting. It's why we come out here to be with nature and it should be fun. Okay, so I'm going to add a little color to these supporting actors here. Just kind of a gray. And there's nothing in painting, I find when I teach classes, there's a lot of fear of making a mistake. Everything can be corrected. So there should be no fear. Just paint it like you mean it and you can correct it later. 
you change your mind. It's important, I think, sometimes to change your mind. I had a teacher who said, anyone who doesn't change their mind doesn't have one, and I think that's important in painting, to never be too committed to the painting too early. Or maybe it's better said not to fall in love with the painting too early because lots of changes will still be made. So now I'm gonna lay in some of the leaves. So the apple blossoms are white and pink and, and beautiful, but they do have a, a green background. And I'm gonna put that in first because it's darker and I want the nice whitey pink to lay on top of it. So I'm gonna mix up a lighter green and I am gonna use white in it to Kick it back a little and make it glow. And I'm using just a little, um, I don't even know, it's not even a half an inch, but it's a flat brush. And when I poke it down, you just get a nice background. And I kind of just dance it along on its side. And I want just a little more contrast than what I'm getting right now. I want that to stand out. So I'm gonna add some olive. And all I'm wanting right now is just this background of green that you see. I'm not worried that I'm going over my branches because I know where they are. We can put those back in later and we will. Again, just stepping back, looking at what we see. Some lovely branches hiding the base of the barn back there, overlapping it, which gives you a sense of distance. Just putting in green and contrast. So I saw close to my barn here that everything was just getting a little gray and purple. So I want to kick that up just a little bit for contrast so it pops out more. So again, you can, you can change things as you go. Nothing that you do in painting is permanent. It's only painting after all. It's not brain surgery, thankfully. It should be a joy. Okay, I want some more contrast. There's not near enough contrast between my, my trees and the grass here. And on your brush, you have two sides of the brush. So I'm gonna go in and do some scraping. Just thinking about little, little bits of grass. especially around the trees, making that pop just a bit. You don't want to go crazy with this. You don't want it to look like overdone, but just these nice light where you get to use that orange background that we started with, that nice warm color. And I'm taking just a little yellow mixed with yellow ochre Go in with paint and do the same thing, giving more contrast to the scene and to the grass. You want a lot of interest going along here. The grass is taking up a lot of the composition, so you want that to be interesting. You want it to have interesting brush marks to let your eye rest on. And those are the things you're thinking about when you're painting. Is it entertaining? If it entertains you, then 
That's the important part. And I'm using pretty dry paint at this point because I really want a thicker paint and I want that feeling of texture. You can move quite quickly. Again, we're not painting every blade of grass. Using black and raw umber, I'm gonna make these tree branches pop just a bit more. And they have some really nice light colors too. So again, thinking about contrast and color. to the birds. That's the, the joy of it after all. They're singing us a nice song right now. Stepping back to look at it, again, I can see that there's more contrast needed, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm just gonna blend some of this background green in so it's not too thick, so it's very loose. And then we're gonna go in and put those blossoms in, which are gonna give us some nice contrast. And we're starting to think about finishing now. I mean, it's, it's not done. It's not close to done, but we're no longer thinking bigger and looser. We're thinking more about detail and refinement. So we danced those upper trees in very quickly. We're gonna revisit them for just a little contrast. They're pretty much one color right now. And I'm gonna put some nice darks in using an ultramarine blue with olive green. See those deep, deep shadows? Playing a little bit with what they call negative shape painting here, where I'm painting around the tree and leaving the tree trunk a little lighter. I'm gonna pull some of that paint out. There's some beautiful birches up there where again, you can use the other side of the brush and scrape some interesting brush or a branch. Hi, we're back. We had a little unexpected break um, in a weather change. As you can see, we had to layer up. Um, it's northern Michigan and we were glamping in the back of the van while a rainstorm blew through. And as you can see, we didn't quite save my painting in time. So we're gonna repair it. One, one more reason not to fall in love with it too fast. You never know in outdoor painting when you might have to go in and fix it. So here we go, thinking of all the same principles. Let's go back. And it's another reason, truly, to think about studying the scene that's before you because the weather's completely changed now. We have almost nothing 
to work with in the sky and I have to remember what that sky was like so record what you can to memory it will help you in the end not quite the color I want there just a tiny bit too green so we just keep mixing and see if we can make a happy accident out of the weather, which is always, when you're this close, and you're on the tip of the Leelanau Peninsula in Northport, you just never know what's gonna happen. But we're Michiganders, we're sturdy, we can take it. We can make lemonade with our lemons. Kind of interesting how the rain left it. Maybe we'll end up using something of that in the end. We'll see. The wind has also picked up quite a bit, so that just motivates us to work fast. Okay, so we got the painting back the way it was, more or less, before the rain took over. And now we're back to the point where we can start thinking about the cherry blossoms. And it can be really overwhelming when you look at these trees and you see all of these gorgeous flowers. You want to paint every one of them, which would be a big mistake. So what I'm going to do is mix my white with a little uh, a Rizalyn crimson, get a nice pink going and really load up my brush lots of paint on it and if you can see I have white mixed in with it so there's pink and white and just like before looking and thinking before I make my first marks and just dancing the side of the brush along because they read as clumps. They don't read as these little tiny individual flowers. And this tree, I love how it kind of extends way over into the barn with these cool branches. And now I'm, I'm spinning my brush to get fresh paint because it's really loaded up. And I am picking up a little of the paint that's underneath it, so you just wanna keep your eye on that. Keep the, the paint very fresh, especially when you go out here for the tips of the flowers. You want those to really stand out. And now I'm just working some of the paint off the brush, putting in the middle of the tree where things are thicker. There's more clumping and it does go right over the branches. And now my brush is getting too much paint on it. We start over with clean, wipe it off, and load it back up again. And the key with trees is looking at the outside edges 
branches do all of these interesting things. When we're little, we just kind of make a circle and think that's a tree, but the joy of trees is all of their character and how the branches go in interesting ways and the trunk as well. Of course, the, the flowers are on the trunk, so. All right, we need a little more white. Which I have handy just at my feet here. looking and painting and measuring up to make sure how you're wanting it to look is how it's coming out. Stepping back to do that. And in real life, these branches are not going up into the tree line like I'm putting them, but because I want this compositionally to be the star of my show here, I'm going to go ahead and bring some of these branches as if the tree were not as low in the valley as it is. As if it were just a little bit higher. Because I like how the branches kind of dance up into this area. And you can make that choice when you're painting. Just rotating the brush, touching it lightly, dancing it along, not getting precious about it. And I know there's, there's a lot of plein air painters that only paint outside. And for me, I do like to um, bring this back into the studio and look at it with fresh eyes. I don't feel like I can judge on the day I do a painting, whether it's done that day, you need a fresh perspective. I'll hang it up in the studio or around the house and look at it for a couple days and see if there's anything that bothers my eyes at all. Um, compositionally or value-wise and and then maybe make a couple changes but I like the benefit of both being outside and in nature you can hear those amazing birds again just happy the rain <laughs> like us happy the rain has stopped and singing away but I also love the comfort of a studio where I don't get rained on in the middle of a painting even though that's half the fun, right? Okay, I'm going in with just a little bit brighter pink. There's these little buds. It looks like before the flowers open, they're quite pink. Plus again, I'm the artist, so you get to choose. And I do like the look of the pink flowers kind of jumping out at you. It's how you think of Michigan spring blossoms. And it gives a nice dimension and value. Not everything's the same color.
now I'm getting towards the finishing point and so it becomes important to look at the details to compositionally In the beginning, we talked a lot about the importance of looseness. And now at the end is when you want to think about detail. And when you're in nature, you want to record as much information to bring back to the studio with you as possible. So it's important to really absorb. The scene. Record it to memory. And know that you can add to it or subtract from it later. The joy in being outside should not be ruined by the voice in your head that tells you it's not going well or that you're not happy with it. You're, you're outside and you're in nature. There's nothing to be unhappy about and that's the key I think to art when when I do teach children quite a bit and when I do they're always so proud of whatever they make whether anyone else would judge it as good or bad they hold it up with the biggest grin and they're like look look what I did and I think that's the approach that we all have to have when we're painting just look what I did and when you're back in the studio you can decide about finishing and Okay, now the one thing that I love to do at the end is to go back. We put the branches in early. We knew we were going to paint over those, but when you look at these trees, you see a lot more branch going on than what you see in here. So we're going to bring some of those branches back in. I'm going to carve some out. We'll go back in with color on some of them. kind of lost and found edges because you don't see a whole branch without seeing lots of blossoms over it. So grabbing a rigger brush, which is has very long brushes where you can almost make like calligraphy. It's my favorite brush for making tree branches. There's a lot of thick paint on here, so I know I'm going to have to go back in when it's a little bit drier. To maybe put some of these branches in, but we'll keep going as long as they'll let us here. And by they, I guess I mean the painting. <laughs> it starts to talk to you after a while and tells you when it's time to be done for a while. painting is getting close to telling me it's time to pause at an interesting spot. That's what they say. How do you know a painting is done? And you don't. You just pause at interesting places. Just a few more branches. Like I said, I might decide to put more back in in the studio later, but you don't want to overdo it. And I think that's good for now. <laughs>